Hi, it's Matt from Beko. Today we're going to go through one of the questions that we get about our dishwashers. Now depending on the model, it comes through in a couple of different forms, but we're going to look at some of the ways you can maybe fix this at home and go through the steps involved in that. So with our dishwashers, what we sometimes see is a blockage actually occurs and it creates a couple of different uh, symptoms that you see from your dishwasher. Now it can form in, in a, the display, you can see an error code that shows an EO1 error. You can also see that your washing, uh, dishwasher might get stuck on a P1 wash cycle or um, you might actually hear the pump continuing to run uh, like a whirring sound and you won't be able to turn it off unless you switch it off at the wall. So today we're going to go through a couple of steps that might actually get your dishwasher up and running again uh, so you can continue to wash your dishes. So the first thing to do is to just clean the filter inside the unit and you're checking for any large particles that might be causing the blockage but it's also a good time to really make sure those filters are clean. So you can find the filter inside the machine. You do need to pull the bottom basket out, so we'll just do that. Now to access the filter, it'll be located in the middle of the dishwasher. It's simply just screw out, uh, and then the whole filter assembly should just pull out like this. Now you do have two filters in your dishwasher. You've got your micro filter, which catches small particles, and then your coarse filter, which catches your bigger particles. We'll show you in a minute how to clean them properly as well. Just while we're here, uh, you can, on all our models, remove the spray arms as well. And it's a good time if you're here to actually clean them. So they just pop up on the bottom and you can flush them with a hose. Gets out any debris that might be there and it's a good way to make sure your dishwasher is nice and clean and doing a good job of cleaning your dishes. You can also clean the top arm at the same time. So to get that off, you do just need to turn the, knob, turn the dial, it comes off. And again, just put it under a tap and give it a clean as well. It's a good time to do it. And then obviously you do need to make sure it clicks back on with the top arm, otherwise you'll find that it falls off during the wash and won't continue to wash your dishes. We'll show you now how to just clean the uh, micro filter and the coarse filter properly. Once you've got the filter out, it's a good time to give it a clean. So you've got a coarse filter and the micro filter. The coarse filter just comes out and give it a bit of a rinse. You can give it a bit of a wipe down too, just to get rid of all the debris. It's really important with your micro filter that you do give it a bit of a scrub with the scourer, both inside and outside. Even though it might look clean, it's important to get as much debris off that as you can to improve the dishwashing performance. Now once you've given it a clean, you want to place that back into the dishwasher. It goes in the same way it came out. So you just slide it, slide it in. Now the really important step here is that you click it into place. If you don't click it into place, then those, that debris can actually bypass those filters and then you'll find you have a decrease in dishwashing performance uh, and your dishes will come out unclean. So it's really important that when you put your filter back in, you need to click it back into place. Next, we're gonna show you uh, how to clear the spigot, uh, the connection under the sink. It'd be, it's the narrowest point of discharge for the water, so it's where commonly blockages do actually occur. So here we are under the sink. Uh, now we need to check the discharge hose and the connection into your S-Bend. Now, normally you'll find it's connected with um, a clamp just holding the hose on. We've already undone, uh, undone the clamp just to make it a little bit easier to come off. But you will need to pull this discharge hose off your S-trap. You'll find you've got a spigot that sits at about 45 degrees there as well. Um, now there's two things we want to check. We want to check the end of the hose to just make sure it's nice and clear. So a visual check of that. You'll often find that this is the narrowest point. Um, so if something is blocked then it's likely to be there. Now. You can see here that this one's been fully drilled out. So sometimes that, um, that connection hasn't been drilled out the whole way. So you just want to make sure it's got a nice open entry. Uh, we can easily visually see that this is clear. Sometimes these are set at a different angle, a little harder to see. So even just being able to poke down a, a screwdriver or something like that to make sure it's nice and clear um, and there's nothing caught in there. Once you've done that, then it's just a matter of reconnecting it. So obviously you just put the discharge hose back on and then re-tighten your clamp and that's back in place and ready to go. Now the final step in this process is to try and remove any of the water that's returned back to the dishwasher. So if you have found a blockage, you will find that water has run back into the dishwasher and there's a bottom flood pan that sits underneath uh, where that water collects. Now, if water has gone there, you will find that that's what's activated your EO1 error or why it's stuck on P1 or that wearing continual pump sound. That's actually the, the water that's gone back in to the unit that's causing that. So we do need to remove it. So we've already taken this dishwasher out of its current uh, position. 
And we do that just so we can tilt it back far enough to get that water to run out of that bottom flood pan. Now we do recommend that you put a towel down, so it's important that you put a towel down behind the machine because I don't, we don't know how much water will actually come out. Uh, in this case, uh, there is no water in this machine, but just to show you, you just need to tilt it back slightly. It doesn't have to be too far, and then obviously once all that water's run out, um, give it a bit of a clean up. But that should allow you to run another wash, which will hopefully run smoothly and get you washing your dishes again with your Veco dishwasher.